pause for a second. We can. I want to give a chance for the partners in the room to take a moment to kind of just speak up here. Um, we have uh, National Milk Producers Federation. I see you there, Ryan. We have Tyson in the room. We have Smithfield in the room. Uh, sorry to call you all out. You may not all want to talk, but um, and USDA. So. For the partners, if you're willing to just stand up, come up here with us, and just tell the room a little bit about why you got involved, because I think researchers really sometimes don't get to hear that voice about why do you want nutrient recovery technologies? What's your interest in it? Um, so, Brian, would you like to start? So, I'm Ryan Bennett with National Milk Producers Federation, and we represent dairy cooperatives. Uh, it's about 70% of the milk supply goes through uh, the cooperative structure. Uh, actually, more than that, 70% that's members of National Milk, at least. And uh, HEMA came to us right before, a couple months before the Seattle meeting and had this great idea for the Nutrient Recycling Challenge. I think her former boss, Allison, and I had talked a lot about these technologies that we were really looking at finding ways to incentivize, and we were talking about two guys in the, in the truck kind of operations. Everybody kind of comes by and talks to farmers over and over and over and over again about these technologies, but they have really no understanding what they are, how they work. And at the same time we were getting ready, uh, we were just launching a company, Nutrient, Mark Stormans here from Nutrient, and we really partnered with our checkoff, DMI, and 10 of our largest <coughs> cooperatives to get that company off the ground um, and, and really look for a way to really start uh, narrowing in on these technologies, looking at what they are, how they work, and being able to inform our farmers a little bit more to make better decisions. So this worked right in line with what we were working on with Nutrient at the time, and uh, we really, viewed it as a good way to work with EPA. You know, obviously we work more with USDA, um, but we, we think there's innovative ways to work with EPA going forward. Uh, one of those is water quality trading, um, other environmental markets such as the carbon markets that exist. So we have a MOU with the National Association of Clean Water Agencies. We work on things like nutrient trading or to work through USDA programs like the Regional Conservation Partnership Program to put together projects with technologies like these. Uh, I'll let Mark talk more about uh, you know, what Nutrient's up to, uh, but we are active in the policy space as it relates to the, these technologies. We have a 30% investment tax credit legislation called the Agriculture Environmental Stewardship Act that is a biogas and nutrient recovery <coughs> tax credit for 30%. And, it, and it, uh, it, it's a it's a tough it's it's tough getting any tax credit legislation passed, but we do have bipartisan sponsorship in both the House and the Senate. We're also really interested in working more with USDA. Uh, there are USDA programs that exist. I'll let people talk about those later. Uh, but there are restrictions on income and things that restrict kind of the diffusion of innovation process from really getting kicked off. So. Uh, it's our belief that if you can incentivize these technologies with larger operations, that that will drive the cost down for your medium-sized producers as time goes forward. If you have some of those restrictions, that's not USDA's fault, that's a congressional problem in the Farm Bill. Uh, through adjusted gross income and other restrictions, that if you remove that, you really allow that diffusion of innovation process to get kicked off. Maybe some of the larger farms can afford to put in these technologies in the beginning, drives down the cost, creates a market, and allows more medium-sized producers to participate. So that's another thing that we're really interested in working on going, going forward. Uh, but you know, we, we really appreciated the chance that we were more involved in the beginning and it kind of kicked it off and threw it over to our friends at Nutrient. Um, but uh, we really appreciated the chance to be a part of this, and we think this is uh, this is just the beginning. I think the the, the co-products, the market for the co-products is key going forward, and uh, and I think that uh, uh, this is not something that is 10 years away, like it, like it was kind of sold as about three years ago. 
think it's I think it's going to happen right now, and um, we're working on the policy side to do all that we can do, whether it's water quality trading, USDA programs, or tax incentives. Um, but I know there's a lot of people working in a lot of different areas here. We just appreciate the, the ability to participate. Thanks, Ryan. Um, Mark, do you want to? I know we're going off our own schedule here, but this is really great, so <laughs> I want to make sure you all get to hear from our partners. So. Hi, I'm Mark Sherman. As Ryan said, Nutrient was founded by the uh, dairy industry, basically 12 progressive co-ops with National Milk and DMI. We do represent a really broad base of dairy manure creators. They, they make milk too, but that's <laughs> kind of their sidelight. They really create a lot of manure. And that's really what Nutrient was created for, is we do create a lot of manure, and it's a value-added product, as most of the people in this room know. And our goal has been to really try to help focus on a product orientation. Um, no offense to, to, the, to the technology inventors, but you really had to focus on the science and making it work. But for a product, to sell allows your science to be implemented. So we've been really trying to concentrate and working with the, the team to try to help put a sharp point on that. We need a product at the end that supports the project, that supports the technologies. And so that's really what we've been doing, trying to work with a lot of you. Um, put a little plug for my talk at 5 o'clock this afternoon when all of you are thinking about going other places. We brought out a technology catalog, and we're continuing to work with vendors and dairy farmers to marry that up. And many of the technologies that, that you'll see actually are included in our technology catalog, and you're able to see that just by going on nutrient.com. So we really appreciate the opportunity to work together with EPA. Um, we really see the regulatory community and the dairy community having to work together to solve some environmental issues for the country. So that's the direction that, that we're working with and, and working with National Milk and DMI to, to help advance. Thanks. Um, Fadon and Allison, would you like uh, from Water Environment Reuse Foundation, Foundation Federation? Fun I know Foundation. you just switched your name, so <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure. Hi, my name is Fadon Karibova. And I'm Allison Diamond. And we are representing the Water Environment Reuse Foundation. We recently merged with Water, Re Water Reuse Research Foundation, so hence the name change. Can you speak a little louder, please? Sure. We recently merged with Water Reuse Research Foundation, hence the name change. We added an percent, and the R is now Reuse. So we are we're a national foundation that funds water research and innovation. Um, so we've been funding a whole. I we've uh, given most of you guys a handout if you want. If you didn't get one, you can come up to me afterwards and I'll send you one. But in the past, we've been funding a whole lot of research on water quality. Um, some of the ag-based research that we've been funding is helping to um, help facilitate water quality trading. I know a couple of our folks have been talking about that. And the reuse of um, both wastewater and industrial water as ag irrigation. Um, we also have some projects on Things um, we've developed a, 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 an international BMP database for agricultural BMPs that builds on a, an international stormwater BMP database. Um, so our focus is really on driving the research that's needed for both the water quality community and folks in the watershed to make the best decisions about water quality and quantity management. We also have what's called the LIFT program. It stands for Leaders Innovation Forum for Technology. The whole idea of that program is to push technology innovation in the industry. And the way we do that is we work on one side with the end users, so a lot of the utilities, and also the organizations that need the technologies. And on the other side, we work with the technology providers buying those technologies. We have over 100 technologies that have been vetted through the LIFT technology scan process. And we basically connect the two. So the end users are connected with the technologies that they need to push the utility to form the utility of the future product. And the way we got involved with the nutrient recycling challenge, we were actually involved from the beginning as judges. And the idea is we already work in the nutrient recovery, nutrient removal, 
uh, industry, and now we start working on the agriculture projects. So the whole idea of connecting the end users with the technology providers, that's what we're trying to do, and we're trying to do that also more with the ag industry. That's why we're here, and we're excited to be part of it. And we're, you know, we're really looking for partners that, as a foundation, we fund research. And so we're looking for partners that would be interested in working with, on, with us on research concepts, on funding pilots and validations of value uh, recovery technologies. So, and actually, what a lot is of the level of funding that you provide? What is the level? So we have a number of programs, and we can talk to you a little bit about it. Um, so we have projects that we funded between fifty and two hundred fifty thousand um, dollars. We have some projects that are bigger than that. But well, I don't think that. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> we do too. <laughs> Thank you. One last plug: a lot of the technologies that have gone through the Nutrient Recycling Challenge have also been featured in the Little Format. Yeah, a great connection. Kind of. They so one question, historically <laughs> you have been in the municipal sector? So historically we've been working with uh, wastewater, municipal wastewater treatment plants, uh, stormwater, and watershed. Uh, we also, on the reuse side, have been working with uh, reuse, um, folks who are doing uh, reuse, so both industrial and municipal reuse. So I don't know if you noticed when you got up and started talking that there was a lot of blank stares? Yeah. There, because. This yeah. is the first time I've ever heard of your organization. I do. I did. <laughs> That's okay. Mostly we've been in the, as you said, in the municipal uh, water quality side. And so, but we've been working for the last couple of years with uh, USDA, the National Corn Growers, the Iowa Soybean Board, on our international store, the Ag BMP database. Excellent. Uh, just a quick question. Our innovators who are going to be showcasing some of their ideas, is anyone in a time crunch to have to, I know we're moving off of our own schedule here. But. Okay, good. Um, I want to continue letting the partners tell you, telling you about their interests. So um, next, how, who's next? How about Smithfield? <laughs> Um, many of you heard from me yesterday. I need to extend uh, apologies from Craig Westerby, who's, who's my supervisor, who was very sick and said, hey, can you uh, step in? And so I'm, I'm happy to do that. Um, Smithfield Hog Production Group is, is very excited about this. Um, we have, have found success by partnering with different entities. And, and as I mentioned yesterday, uh, whether well, that's uh, EPA, um, EDF, and so when we put our uh, our momentum and and efforts moving in the same direction, we're found uh, much more uh, success than arguing about how bad it is or these are what we believe and this is what your data shows and all that. Let's let's all uh, head in the same. So I uh, I thank the group. Um, for giving us the opportunity. Um, as, as I look down that very diverse list of, of products and technologies, what I want to express is, is my role is, is director of engineering. And so um, I have either the, the headache or the privilege of being engaged to some level with, with operations in 15 states of, of the United States and two uh, different regions in Mexico. And so I can find an application for everybody's technology. Um, if, if you want to work with our Iowa group, you're probably not going to be able to make it any better than what it is because we're pretty well recycling all those uh, nutrients. What we need is a little bit of what uh, the Chesapeake Bay is doing, understanding buffers and runoff control, but we've got our nutrients bound and it's being recycled and it's being utilized by crop. In the East Coast, where land is more limited, where rainfall is more abundant, eh, we're not quite as balanced. So we're very much looking for those things. There's opportunities in Utah and California, Arizona, Wyoming that are very arid, that they've got uh, some wonderful drying technologies that are, or drying opportunities and value adds and, and opportunities to go to the West Coast that we're not going to have in the East Coast. So. Um, I'm very interested in diversity of, of all the things that I've seen. Um, I, I wish you all success. I think that there's um, 
opportunities for each of those ideas. And, and really it is marketing. I touched yesterday that you know Smithfield has a sustainability program. Um, animal care is number one. That's, that's what we do is, is we raise animals. Second on that list, most often you will hear environment. Third is, is food safety. So we've got to do those three every day, everywhere, all the time if we're gonna stay in business. And we want to be a leader in, in the industry. And um, as a vertically integrated company, if we screw up on the farm, that damages the brand that you see in the grocery store or that we're selling to whoever, the, the McDonald's of the world or the Subways or the, the uh, partners. So it is very important to us to, it is ingrained in us that we have to protect the brand at every level, whether that's transportation, whether that's on the farm, whether that's in further processing and packing. Um, and and the other, the other uh, pillars of sustainability are, are we've got to take care of our people and be safe. We've got to be involved in the communities that we operate. And finally, we've got to add value. Uh, value to the owners, value to uh, to be economically sustainable as well. So we think that this is a great way to interact. I've been involved with a few of the webinars. Um, I appreciate your time. Happy to talk with you. Um, you know, my, my true challenge every day is getting it implemented on the ground in whatever region that is dealing with whatever climatic, whatever scale. A lot of the East Coast farms are much smaller. As the, as the businesses move west, they're much bigger. The regulations are different, the climate, the environment, all kinds of differences. So, um, and, and even the talent um, on, on the farms, the skill levels. So um, there's a lot of diversity in our operations. I think there's a lot of opportunities and, and we're grateful to part of this and uh, look forward uh, to talking with and, and working with y'all in the future. Thanks, Paige. Um, Smithfield was one of our first uh, collaborators, actually. And when Joseph kind of pitched the idea to Craig Westerbeek and Dennis Tracy back in early 2015, I think it was, and, um, you know, we're, it's no secret that EPA's budget is uncertain. You know, we're not the cash cow, the, the big prize provider that like the NASA challenges and the X prize can provide. But what you're talking about is, you know, the world's largest pork producer and many other very large companies, Tyson, who I'm going to call up next. Um, and, you know, as you can see, the National Milk Producers Federation, I mean, you have like the biggest players in dairy and swine who are paying attention to these innovators and researchers' ideas. And that's the market. It's not that. You know, so um, it's a privilege to work with Jamie and Dave and Ryan and the folks at Cabot and you know it, all across the board, Innovation Center, because those are the people that are going to drive the innovation. Those are the um, companies that are going to drive or the organizations that are going to drive it. Jamie, would you, Jamie Birch from Tyson Foods, one of our great partners in this project as well. <coughs> So I would say there's probably two main reasons why Tyson is in, involved, and some of you may say, we're talking about pigs and cows, why is Tyson interested in it? Well, very quietly behind my friends at Smithfield, we're number two in pork. <laughs> <laughs> and then very quietly behind some other friends, we're number two in beef. So very, not very many people know that, but, uh, but and, 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 that, and that's okay. So. Um, to me, uh, this spot, this was also part of the animal ag discussion group that Kelly talked about. So it's really been more of a holistic approach of bringing uh, the regulated community together, the regulators together, NGOs together to not only form relationships, but potentially just to, to solve a challenge. The second reason is uh, before every one of us got out of bed this morning, we depended upon a farmer. And what I mean by that is more than likely there was some cotton in that pillow or in those sheets that we got out of bed in. Uh, 50 years ago, some of us can think back that far almost, uh, a third of us worked on the farm, and today there's 2%. If you, I, I'm not an academic, but if I, if I draw a, full, a line between those two points, that, that line doesn't look very good. So we depend upon about 15,000 farmers every day to provide animals that we can end up turning into food. 
So it's important for us to be able to find solutions because quite frankly, I mean, you heard yesterday, uh, there's been millions and millions and millions of dollars spent, whether it be the industry, whether it be EPA, whether it be the National Pork Board, whether it be any other research funders. And guess what? There's no easy button and there's no silver bullet yet. So. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Uh, next up, I think we have Mark from DOE in the room. Mark, are you still here? Oh, we're here. Yeah, would you like to talk about how you joined? Sure. Department of Energy. Yes, U.S. Department of Energy. We don't raise any animals, so we don't, we're not number two or three. <laughs> so maybe our national labs sometimes. But what we do is, and I'm from our Office of Bioenergy Technologies, and what we like is to make biofuels and bioproducts out of pretty much anything we can get our hands on that's organic. So to us, manure is a lovely feedstock. And that's, that's what we're here for and nutrient recycling. We very much like to approach things in terms of what we call integrated biorefineries. So, and with oil and, and natural gas prices where they are, it's kind of difficult to make money making fuel. Therefore, you need other products to make it work. Nutrients are an excellent example. Struvi or some kind of nitrogen or ammonia, whatever it is, that that helps make the whole thing work. So that's why we do it. And we are excited that the EPA is taking the lead on this and also our, our uh, sister agency of the USDA, so we're kind of honored to be a part of it. Glad to see that. Thanks, Mark. And Mark's office is also funding uh, the research on the markets for co products right now. So it's yeah, we, 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 we kind of hide. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of USDA, Dr. Renoni or no, I think it's it's you. Where? Oh, Jeff. Or Bill. Or Bill. Go ahead. <laughs> Anyone. <laughs> go, go right. We have two so, offices at USDA that have been um, yeah. partnering with us. The I, I'm with the Agricultural Research Service, and we are yes. the branch of, of the USDA that conduct research. Uh, NRCS is another agency, and they are more in contact with farmers to implement the technology. Uh, uh, we have been working for many years in trying to um, um, to better uh, management of manure. And I think uh, this idea of uh, recovering nutrients is the key uh, for success uh, because uh, there is a tremendous need to capture uh, all these uh, phosphorus, uh, nitrogen, and try to put it uh, to better use. So uh, we're very happy to uh, collaborate with this effort uh, because uh, we think that uh, we're going to change the way that we manage the manure in the future. So, thank you. Yeah, we couldn't, we definitely couldn't do it without you. So, um, Dr. Renaudi is gonna give a presentation a little bit later that's um, about, the, it's for the innovators that are developing tech design. Jeff or Bill, do you have any, would you like to add anything from the NRCS perspective? Go ahead, Bill. So uh, it was, we talked with Hema and Joseph and EPA on a, on a monthly basis, and they first, uh, you know, they first started talking about the nutrient recycling challenge. They weren't, they didn't have a name yet. Uh, so you know, they're talking about something like the X Prize. So why wouldn't you want to be involved in the Manure X Prize? So, uh, um, so the NRCS has got a field people in just about every county in the U.S. that provide um, financial and technical assistance to producers. And, you know, we want to be able to provide them with the most up-to-date, economically viable technologies when we, when we talk to them and make recommendations. So this is, you know, right up our alley, too, in, in terms of having new technologies, you know, there's going to be something that comes along that's better than what we have. And we want to know that as, as, as <coughs> possible. Um, you know, a lot of the innovators are interested because they want to know how do we get funding from some of our programs. And, uh, you know, Jeff and his team uh, are all about bringing that technology 
to you know, our, our field staff. So we're interested in it from, you know, another way to evaluate uh, new technologies, know what's out there, um, so that we can better communicate that when our technical people talk to users. Thanks, Bill. Um, yeah, so NRCS has a conservation innovation grants program that um, one of our other colleagues at NRCS, Bill Corbender, um, has up, and that grant program funds, um, you know, the development of technologies or piloting of technologies, and one of the categories in this past cycle was nutrient recovery technologies. There's a lot of alignment here that's going on. Another program was the Small Business Innovation Research Grants. Each agency, um, well, not all agencies, but many agencies have an SBIR grant program that funds. It's a multi-year, you know, it's a, it's a big budget um, funding of, you know, innovation research grants. And they also had manure um, reuse as a category, is that right? EPA did. EPA did, EPA's SBIR grant program, and there was a, idea that came out of that that got funded for, you know, reusing swine manure for roof shingles, you know. So there's there's these grant programs and we've tried to kind of align and bring in and connect innovators with some of the representatives from these programs so they can find out about, okay, well there is parts of government that are trying to invest in this if you're ready for that and, and you can jump in on the cycle. Um, and those, those representatives are paying attention to the challenge and that's helping to bring the awareness that this is something worth investing in. Any other partners that we missed in the room? Okay.